This is the last vodcast for Unit 4, and everything we've been working on up to this point has been leading us towards this uh, this theory. The fact that we had to learn minerals so we can identify certain rocks, uh, figuring out what different things about the rocks tell us on how it formed, and then using those to go through relative dating and absolute dating and radioactivity and, and the magnetic reversals and everything. Uh, continental drift leads us up to this idea of plate tectonics. Uh, what is plate tectonics? So plate tectonics is basically the combination of continental drift that Wegener came up with and seafloor spreading. <clears throat> Again, think back, continental drift was rejected originally just because Wegener couldn't describe how the continents were being pushed apart. Seafloor spreading accomplishes that. And when you combine the two things, it basically states that the lithosphere all right, that's basically the crust, all right, and the upper parts of the mantle are divided into plates, and these plates move relative to each other, which means they can collide, they can be pulled apart, or they can just grind past one another. The question you should have, though, okay, so the continents move, and that's driven by seafloor spreading, but what causes seafloor spreading? Or in other words, what is driving the motion of these plates? And if we look inside the crust, the theory states that the ocean... Uh, excuse me, that the mantle is actually <clears throat> kind of like a lava lamp. All right, in a lava lamp, you have uh, a bulb at the bottom that's heating the wax. All right, the wax is the, the, the lava that's moving. And as you heat it up, it becomes less dense. All right, less dense things, all right, for example, hot air balloons are hotter, uh, the air is hotter than the surrounding air, is less dense. Less dense things, just like a hot air balloon, will rise. And as it rises up, all right, but from being heated by the outer core, it eventually rises up and hits the lithosphere. And when it does, it separates and forms what's known as a convection current. Convection is this idea of transferring energy through the flow of a heated material. When it hits the surface, it's going to spread out, So as it spreads out, it becomes denser, and it becomes denser, it actually sinks back down. So you get this cycle of warm, less dense things rising, cool, dense uh, stuff sinking back down to be reheated, and the cycle just keeps going. All right. This is the idea that drives plate tectonics. But there's still a lot of questions about these uh, convection cycles. How big are they? Why do they start where they do? Why do they go down where they do? What's the cause behind them? So there are a lot of questions. and and if you think about it, this is a very difficult uh, place to study, all right? It's deep underground. You can't drill down into the uh, uh, mantle and see what's going on. Uh, so you have to study indirectly. And this process of this convection cycle is very, very slow. The continents move at very sm uh, small amounts. So it's very hard to study. But we do have a lot of evidence that supports this idea. For example, we can take all of Wegener's continental drift evidence, the continental shapes, the fossil distribution, the rock types, and the ancient climate, and apply that to this. That all still supports the idea that the continents were once together and have been moving around. And then the seafloor spreading evidence, the fact that we can tell that the rocks near the, uh, the ridges are younger, um, the magnetic reversals that support this idea. But we can also take evidence uh, from where volcanoes occur and uh, where earthquakes occur and help support this idea that the continents move from or uh, that the plates are interacting and moving at these plate boundaries. All right, so so if I take this map and of the world and put on the plate boundaries, you can see you've got the mid-ocean ridge and you've got these other uh, uh, ridges, plate boundaries. When I apply the location of all the active volcanoes, you can see that it matches up quite well with where the plate boundaries uh, are. There are a few volcanoes that are not found on there, and not all plate boundaries have volcanoes on them. But there is a very strong correlation, especially in the Pacific, which is known as the Ring of Fire, where many, many of the uh, volcanoes occur right on plate boundaries. And as far as earthquakes go, that's even a stronger correlation. Again, earthquake occurs when uh, plates uh, move, and we can definitely see that 
plates are moving, they're interacting, they're colliding, they're being ripped apart in these uh, places. Now there are a few uh, earthquakes in other places, but we'll study that later on and their causes. So the last bit of this, uh, the last half of this vodcast is just going over the different uh, types of plate boundaries where uh, the plates interact. All right, you get different geologic features occurring. In a divergent plate boundary, the plates are actually being pulled apart, they're moving away, and that occurs over a rising part of that convection cycle. When that magma is rising up, and you should have seen this in your uh, activity with the different plate boundaries, the crust gets separated, and depending on whether it's a continent above or not, all right, you get different things. If you see it here on the left, as this continent is being ripped apart, you can have uh, something known as a rift valley. All right. uh, a good example, and you want to write down these examples of a rift valley, is actually occurring right now in Africa. Africa is being ripped apart. Um, in the rift valley here, the Horn of Somalia is being pulled this way, while uh, the rest of Africa is staying still. Uh, there's a rift valley, or a divergent plate boundary, that's forming underneath this, and the ground is actually uh, similar to what you see in that, I saw in that uh, animation, stair step down and it's getting lower and lower. So as the sea level drops, the, uh, excuse me, as the elevation drops, uh, because this is being pulled apart and uh, stretching it out, actually it'll get close again to sea level and uh, fill in with water. And you'll have something like the Gulf of Aden. What eventually happens though is that it's no longer ocean or continental crust, but it's ocean crust being pulled apart. And a good example of that is actually the Mid Ocean Ridge. The Mid Ocean Ridge um, <clears throat> started out when Pangaea uh, was ripped apart. So the North American plate and the uh, Eurasian plate and the African plate were all together, and, but this was being this separated. And um, a good example that we can use is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, but also Iceland. Iceland is actually part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's just above the water. And you can see that half of uh, Iceland is actually on the North American plate being pulled to the west, and the other half is being pulled to the east by the Eurasian plate. Um, we've got a lot of volcanoes, a lot of hot springs and things associated with volcanism, a lot of earthquakes that occur there that support this idea. Uh, and in fact, you can actually measure this uh, this drift with GPS, and we see that the continents are moving to the left or the right or whatever at whatever rates. And in Iceland, it's actually visible. You see a rift valley that has grown over the course of just a few life uh, uh, lifespans. Uh, uh, but we can actually see in Iceland that. Uh, there is a rift that has formed and widened over the course of just a lifetime. So it's not a question of is this happening or not. It, it is happening. Uh, it's measured uh, by GPS. The question is what's causing it, really. Uh, then let's go with convergent plate boundaries. Convergent, there are actually three different convergent plate boundaries that we're going to hustle through here. Uh, they're all colliding plates. And if we have types of crust colliding, as you saw in that little simulation, continental crust colliding with oceanic crust, all right. When continental crust when continental crust collides, all right, something happens known as subduction. Subduction is when uh, one plate gets pushed underneath another, and when it's between continental and ocean crust, ocean always subducts due to the fact that it's more dense. And as this more dense plate uh, subducts, it gets pushed deeper into the mantle, which heats it up, and and when it gets pushed down, some of that's going to begin to melt. And as it melts, it's actually less dense. And just like in the convection cycle, uh, that less dense material rises up to the surface. It breaks through some cracks. And actually, when it breaks through onto the continents, all right, volcanoes are formed. In fact, it's called a continental volcanic arc, or sometimes known as a, a volcanic mountain range. A great example of these in the United States are actually the Cascade Mountains. The Cascade Mountains occur in northwest uh, United States and, and in Canada. And it occurs when the uh, Juan de Fuco plate is actually being subducted underneath the North American plate. And <clears throat> as it's being subducted, that magma uh, rises up and forms those volcanic mountain ranges. Uh, the Andes are also another good example of those. In ocean versus ocean, again, one still is going to subduct. It's usually the older, the more dense. 
Um, but the difference is when that magma rises up, it doesn't rise up uh, below a continent, it rises up an ocean, and we get known, uh, what's known as a volcanic island arc. All right. Uh, Japan, excellent example. Uh, Java and Sumatra, if you think back uh, quite a few years ago now, the 2004 uh, Christmas tsunami occurred when the, one of the largest earthquakes in recorded history occurred. And uh, that tsunami was set off by the earthquake, which was a result of movement along a plate boundary. Uh, <clears throat> when two ocean uh, plates are actually colliding. So very good example there. Um, colliding plates when it's continental versus continental is a little bit different as you saw in that simulation. In fact, there is no subduction because those continent, continental crust uh, is so low in buoyant or in density that it doesn't get pushed down um, and forms what's known as a complex mountain uh, range or a folded mountain range. And I like the folded mountain range because it gives you that visual of these layers of rock that are caught in between being folded and squished and changed Appalachian Mountains are a great example uh, of when two small continents collide together. Um, also, the Himalayans are even better because when India smashed into the Eurasian Plate, uh, it formed the, uh, the Himalayan Mountains and is still forming them. Uh, we actually measure that it, they're growing. Uh, Mount Everest is growing a few centimeters, uh, I think every year or so. I can't remember the exact rate. But it, it's caused because India is still pushing into uh, the Eurasian plate and causing all the stuff in between to be folded and pushed up. All right, last one is a transform boundary. When plates don't push into each other, they don't pull away, but just grind past one another. All right, example is the San Andreas Fault. Uh, that's the best one that we can look at. Uh, and joints along a mid-ocean ridge. If you look along the mid-ocean ridge, it's not a continuous line. It kind of sidesteps every once in a while. And where those plates move in opposite directions, uh, it forms a, uh, a transform fault, or excuse me, transform boundary. Mm -hmm.